Yeah. All right. So now this is basically how the ark would work. The, 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 because a lot of people say there's no way it'll work. It really was big on the inside. Trailers hold a lot of stuff. So how many boxes like this could a trailer hold? 2,326. How many trailers like this can the ark hold? 450. How many boxes like this could the ark hold? Somewhere in the neighborhood of a million forty-six thousand and seven hundred. Now, again, that's if you build it with the royal cubit. You line up the trailers four and a half miles long, and that's what you could have put on the ark. So again, we're trying to say the size. the The smaller cubit could have been four miles of trailers. So there's still a lot of stuff. So again, that's the smaller cubit. There's going to be 907,000 of those boxes. That's a lot of stuff. You got to admit that. <laughs> Railroad cars like this hold a lot of stuff. And if you built it with a railway cubit, it'd be 646 railroad cars. So I want you to get an idea of the size. That's 7.4 miles of railroad cars. And again, 570 or six and a half miles if you use the smaller cubit, which is still a lot of stuff. The arc is shaped more like a barge. That's a river barge over in Europe. Then La Terrabile, this is the fastest Navy ship that's ever been built. It was French and went over 52 miles an hour uh, because it was supposed to carry stuff. That's the, you, you, you understand, show, show. yeah, you know that one. Yeah, that's, a, that's from the Saturn V stages that went up the river. And that's how big it carries stuff. Ancient barges carried stuff. They built, they carried an obelisk, which is the Washington Monument. So again, they can carry really huge stuff, 910,000 pound obelisk that on an ancient barge. It was built to carry lots of stuff in rough seas. The Ark was a workhorse. The Ark wasn't a show horse. And we understand that saying. The Ark was built to hold thousands of animals and the food to take care of them. So what does the Bible say about how long they were on the Ark? Duh, everybody knows that. 40 days and 40 nights. Well, the flood, the deluge, continued for 40 days. Then, on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. This is straight out of the Bible. Did they come out of the ark then? No. How long were they on the ark? Well, it's time for some ark math. This is when they went in the ark. This is when they came out of the ark. And if you do a little ark math, it's one year and 10 days. So they stayed a little over a year in the ark. And again, there's a lot of adults that would go 40 days, 40 nights, and then you're out. The ark was built to hold thousands of animals and food and water to take care of them for over a year. Packing for the weekend, packing for a year. It's a different thing. The ark was built to hold all of this for over a year. It says make it into a lower, middle, and upper deck. These are some models that people made. And these are just, but they're about three decks. It really was big on the inside. I love this picture right here because it's got all the different, it's got people, it's got animals. It really was a, a menagerie, so to speak, you know, a, a, well, it was a zoo. It was a zoo. So what is a zoo? I love that picture right there. An establishment that maintains a collection of wild animals for conservation. Noah had a collection of animals and the conservation was to save them from the flood. They've tried to picture the ark. It had to have certain things, storage, it had to have animals, places for animals, a place for people. It had to have, again, it could have been open like this, but you had to have a place to feed them and the feed to feed them. And you had to clean them. It's kind of one of those things that I want a whatever kind of animal, but they don't want to have to clean a litter box or 
clean the cage or walk it or whatever. There were lots of mouths to feed on the ark. It was always work to do. One of the things we didn't do at the very end is, is there was a book and it says lazy days on the ark. There was no lazy days on the ark. According to the Bible, the ark had three floors, plenty of room for all those animals. The vast majority were small. The largest would only be a few hundred pounds. So I ask you, ask you a question. <clears throat> That's not a few hundred pounds. But that is. So it's very possible you could carry younger, smaller animals on the ark. Just simple things that, well, wow, I didn't think about that. There's a hippo. There's a giraffe. You don't have to get a 20-foot tall giraffe. It was big on the inside, upper level, middle level, lower level. This is how big a person would be compared to the ark. Some even think the ark may have had ramps. And so you could have had ramps to move, especially, you know, any kind of larger animals. Because apparently elephants aren't real good on stairs. You cared for the animals. Take every kind of food that is to be eaten. That's in Genesis 6.21. There were herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores are plant eaters. You could dry the fruit. You could have grains. You can compress the hay and the straw. It doesn't have to be a hay baling machine. You can do that hand-wise. Some believe they even possibly could have grown some plants on the ark, some low light kind of plants, herbs and things. Carnivores are meat eaters. You could dry the meat. You could have salted the meat. You ask the kids, you know, go in Cracker Barrel and they have a ham hanging up there. Can you eat that ham? Uh, yeah, I said, not in the refrigerator, is it? You can smoke it. You could pickle it. Vinegar is over 5,000 years old, so you could have done that. We're trying to tell you it could be done. This is outside the box. Tortoises. Okay, yeah, right. They can survive a year with no water or no food, and they can weigh over 650 pounds. They used to do it. And by the way, the full-size ark in Hong Kong uses tortoises. Sailing ships would allow the tortoises to roam the deck until it was their turn to be on the menu. And, or they could turn them upside down. They, the Galapagos, the giant tortoises there, they almost ex made them extinct because the sailing ships would go by and take them. Now, this is meat, turtle meat, tortoise meat. Carnivores, people could eat that. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Would you eat that? Man, yeah. Little ranch dressing, white dressing. Uh-huh. This is another outside the box called lungfish. Now, lungfish basically dig down in the ground when it's dry, cover itself in a little cocoon of mucus, and it can go for over a year, up to a year, with no water or food. So what they do in some places is you dig it up, put it on the shelf, and when you need fresh fish, you just break it open, and there it is. And that's what it looks like. So again, there's all sort of ways that you can come up with, this will work. They were fodder animals. Fodder animals are animals you keep to feed other animals. That's a fodder animal. And now, now when you, when you turn to this and you, the kids oh, oh, you know, on the other hand, I said, how many of you like chicken nuggets? All of them. I said, you know, they don't, they don't volunteer to be your dinner. You know it? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So these are fodder animals. Carnivores will even eat insects. Basically, they'll eat fruits, especially if there's not much meat or there's limited meat. Piscivores are fish eaters. So how do you get fish? You salt it. You can dry it. I love this picture. Some believe you could even call them from the ark. Probably not a true picture, but I love the picture. 
Omnivores will eat both plants and meat. Take every kind of food that's to be eaten for whatever the thing eats, for every kind of creature from great to small. What they could take on could also be live. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the fodder animal. You're right. Yes. I believe they could. I mean, I'm I don't know for sure, but I think they could, yes. They're also what are called opportunistic non-seasonal hibernators. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> they fatten up and then they go to sleep. I'll get all sciencey here. They go into torpor. And basically you wake up every now and then and then go back to sleep. You know, people like that. <laughs> they use two and a half percent of the food an active animal uses. This is a pygmy possum. It's stupidly cute. I know it is. And it is an opportunistic non-seasonal hibernator. So if you have animals that will fatten up and then go to sleep before winter, this has nothing to do with the seasons. So if that's, that's why it's non-seasonal. So they curl up and sleep for 10 to 12 months. So what benefit is that? <laughs> they only use two and a half percent of the food, which means you need less food for those animals. There's also animals that just don't eat for a while. Bears can go up to three months with no food. Those snakes can go up to six months. This little dude can go up to a year with no food. They can go up to three years and they just motionless for up to three years and they don't eat. So again, if you have animals like that, that means less food. So again, we're trying to come up with how would it work? There's lots of ways. Take every kind of food that's to be eaten. You couldn't be picky on the ark. <laughs> like being stuck on the deserted island. You got coconuts and fish. So guess what? You eat coconuts and fish. There was nowhere to get any more food while they're on the ark. It's, this works for everybody. There's no Walmart. So you ate the food you had. And you liked it. Or you may as well like it. Take every kind of food, store it away as food. Now, there's lots of ways to store food. Back then, terracotta would be one of the ways. There's all manner of ways that you can store food. There's all manner of places you could store food. Now, this is just some examples. Some believe those extra levels, they could have had an extra level. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this would be the floor, this would be the floor, and then they would build an in-between and store in on that in-between shelf, if you want to call it that, level. Feed every kind of creature. House every kind of creature. So if you got to feed it, you got to house it. <clears throat> Animals were kept in cages. Now, reality is, we like to go to zoos and not have cages. Wouldn't this be lots better? Yeah, that'd be great. The catch is, you've got limited amount of space. A lot of space, but limited amount. This is how big the arc is, floor size. 21 college basketball courts. Or if you use the royal cubit, it would have been 24 basketball courts. That is a lot of room. I know it is, but that's a lot of critters. Only and only eight people. This is survival. I, I, I saw this and I thought, and I worked on this. This was like an evacuation center after an emergency. This is say a hurricane. All those people have to have somewhere to live temporarily. Doesn't have to be fancy. That's not what an evacuation center is for. Survival's the goal. So basically, you don't get fancy places. You don't get fancy food. You get, this is survival. So basically, remember, it's temporary. Only till you move back home. The animals on the ark lived in cages just till they went back home. 
there were lots of kind of cages for lots of kind of creatures. Big cages, little cages, birds, all of those things had to be taken care of. But cages are so small. That's true. We like big spaces. Creatures often feel safer in little tight places. That's a little cat. And he's just sawing logs out there, feeling safe and nobody's bothering him. Especially if they feel scared. And you would think that if you're inside with all these other things, that scared is probably at the top of the list. I had a dog named Duke when I was a kid, a little beagle. Asked my granddaddy, help me build a dog house. He was a nice guy, but I wanted to build Duke a big dog house because I was thinking like a people. So I built a big, huge. Now I had Duke on it, like to scare the, the delivery man to death because he didn't know where Duke was. I think he thought Duke was a, was a giant. And then the little beagle comes out. It was way too big for Duke. Now this would have been a lot better for Duke. Let's just be honest. Because not too small, but not too big. And they will feel like Goldilocks just right because they'll feel safer in something smaller. The cages were small, probably had dim lighting. Because remember, if they had lamps down there, it's probably olive oil. There's two possible sources of light on the ark. One is the, the opening, the window. It said it was a cubit. Now, what a lot of people think, here we go is that opening with the length of the arc. And so that was about 18 to 20 inches tall. That would have let in air and light. <laughs> then if you look in Genesis 8, 13, and this is one of those verses that I reckon I just hadn't even thought about it. Noah removed the covering from the ark. Some think the covering was leather. And then when it quit raining, you could take it off and have light. Some think it was a wooden panel that was the covering. And what it did is they think it would, would open up and would let light and air down into the ark. They think the ark could have had a central opening to let light down into the lower levels. The air would have ventilated, and of course, that would have provided fresh air. Now, fresh air would go down and the bad air would go up. And, well, you know, the, what was in the air. The ark wouldn't be bright in the lower floors. I mean, there's no electric lights down there. The animals lived in cages. They have to be places to exercise. There's just no doubt about that for the animals on the ark. So they lived in cages. They had to feed them. As the old saying is, don't work harder, work smarter. So, so basically, self-feeders and waters. Yeah, yeah, really? Well, this is a modern one. I mean, you, you may even have had one of those. Water, food. Now, they could have had the same way. That's made out of terracotta clay. You fill it with water every few days, and then you would go in the cup. Same thing with the food. I like this feeder right here. You could put a bunch of hay there, and the cow could eat his way down. Work smarter, not harder. They probably stored the food near the animals that ate it. So plants near the herbivores, meat near the carnivores, and so forth. And there was hard work. It wasn't lazy. I told the kids, I said, there was this stuff that comes out of your forehead when you work hard. They said, sweat. I said, yeah, they had to sweat. They had to work. Multiple water tanks. Some people think that they caught it and ran it down into the tanks from the top. And it could have been piped through the ark. The Chinese have used it for thousands of years. That's a bamboo pipe. This is a really cool thing. Let me show you real quick here. All right. See this right here? What if the tank had been upstairs and then the water would go to all the different places? You could have had the water. It was bamboo that was accessible, easily used, easily worked. So what we're saying is that it could have been done very simply. It wouldn't have been impossible to do. And you could have poured water in. And there you go. And then work on that little uh, platform right there and come to the next cage. So 
Let's talk about <clears throat> waste. Talks about this. They think that possibly up to 12 tons of animal waste daily. Wasn't it stinky on the ark? Yes. <laughs> Period. <clears throat> How could they stand the smell? Houses and animal towns often had animals in the lower floors. It was just the way it was. It wasn't a money thing. And so there they are. Now, do you think that they smell the animals upstairs? Yes, yes that's just part of it. So basically, go, go. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right, there's some advantages to animals in the house. You don't have to walk outside to feed them or check on them. They're protected from predators and thieves. <clears throat> now, wasn't it stinky in those houses? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what's... Okay, how could they stand the smell? Well, one, clean up the waste regular. I mean, that's... that's. If you have something that looks like that on the left, it's going to stink. And you learn to live with a bad smell. It's like living on a farm. There's sometimes it's going to be bad smells. And so basically, the smell makes money for the family. I remember the, when the mayor here in town, they asked him, does the smell of champion bother you? He said, it smells like money. <laughs> you know, and, and if you were around when champion was here, it didn't smell like money, okay? <laughs> and yeah, sometimes it's worse than others. And so this is a really big deal to a lot of people. You just got used to it. Wasn't it stinky on the ark? Yes, it was. Long-term care, temporary emergency. This is what they had to have on the ark. Remember, it was like an evacuation center. If you had all these people staying in a school gym and all those people ate in the school cafeteria and all, all those people had bathrooms there in the locker rooms, it's going to be smelly sometime, no matter how hard they worked at keeping it clean. The ark was full of animals. Go to the zoo. It doesn't smell like flowers. I love zoo, but it doesn't smell like flowers. The waste, they think that they the, the key was to do where the family didn't have to do all the work. So some think it was simple things like slotted floors. And the waste would go through the slots. And basically, it would go into these little channels. And they would have slanted floors where it could be washed out. And there's a lot of water. This is one where they had 10 cages. And so that, that would let it go into the gutters. And some do simple things like using worms to compost it, take away the smell. Or you could take the, the bedding really, really deep. So how does it end? This is kind of getting to the end of it. How does this end? Is it time to leave the ark? Noah sent out a raven, kept flying back and forth. So it came back. Noah sent out a dove, but the dove couldn't find a place to perch. So he waited seven days and sent out the dove again. When it came back, it was a freshly plucked olive leaf. No one knew the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days, sent the dove out again. And this time the dove didn't come back. It's time to leave the ark. So you know what happens? They all come out. Noah built an altar. <laughs> And, uh, this was to honor the Lord. He took some of the clean animals, the 14, and sacrificed them on the altar. I love that picture right there. Thank you, Lord. The smell of the sacrifice pleased God. That's in Genesis. And this was, this was pleasing to God. Then God blessed Noah and his sons. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. You won't need this, but this is not fruitful and multiply. No, uh-uh, sorry. Have many children grow in number. Well, let's just admit, humans have been really good at multiplication. And as of June the 11th, that was the world's population, 
and I gave the world an A plus in multiplication. Everything will be food for you. So go back to the garden. Everybody was on team veggie. I gave you green plants. Genesis 9, 3 says, I now give you everything. Now, this was before any kind of dietary laws. So the dietary law was this. You can eat anything that doesn't eat you. <laughs> now, there's a, there's, a, there's a key to this story. See the picture? <laughs> this is bear. <laughs> So apparently he didn't eat him and he ate him. So that's bear. I now promise you I'll never destroy you again. So no more floods. I'm putting my rainbow in the clouds. It's the sign of the agreement. And so whatever the rainbow appears, I'll see it and remember the agreement between God and all the creatures. No more floods, no more ark. The reality of Noah's ark I love this title, How Life Survived the Most Catastrophic Event in History. Now, this was in Smithsonian. Some of the sciencey people are reluctantly getting on board. Could Noah's Ark float? In theory, yes. <laughs> this was in the same article. Basic physics suggests an ark carrying lots of animal cargo could float. This was in England. A master's degree program says, tell you what. See if the ark would work. So these master group, the, I mean, the upper level students, they concluded the ark would support all of those sheep and all the species that were around. This work, I mean, these are master's degree, upper level college students. It says you don't necessarily think of the Bible as scientifically, but we discovered it would definitely work. Say, I want you to walk away and go, this is, this was definitely work. Noah's Ark could have happened, scientists say. Well, I wanted to leave you with the last thing. God said Noah's Ark happened. So this is what we did about the Ark, and I hope it increased your faith. Not that you didn't believe it, but when you see these things that try to shoot it to pieces, that you've got just as much ammunition to go back. So. And like I said, when we're through here, I'll try to answer any questions if you got any. But thank you for listening. I hope maybe it made you see things and think about things in a different way. So y'all have a great day. Thank you, brother.